Hi, I'm Susan Lyon. And I'm Scott Burdick. And we are painters that live north of Winston-Salem in North Carolina. We are here to talk about rosemary brushes and how we take, how we clean them and how we take care of them. We uh, love rosemary brushes. We've uh, first heard about them at the Portrait Society about, I'd say seven years ago, I'm guessing, but it was at one of those big conventions. And we fell in love with them. And this is um, one of my studios, and this is a bunch of brushes that I have. Probably 99% of those brushes are rosemary. And if you see one or two that aren't, those were bought before I started using rosemary. But I keep them, you know, I don't want to just throw them away. And I have more brushes at home, so just to let you know. Today we're going to talk about how we clean our brushes. And we actually do kind of clean them a little different. We both use Gamsol. Um, and then I use these two, well, these three different kinds. And so I'm going to demonstrate and show you close-ups about exactly how I clean my brushes after painting each day. So since I don't use these other sorts of uh, cleaning materials or soap, I just use the Gamsol itself. I started doing that long ago when we were landscape painting, when I would go on long landscape painting trips and we wouldn't have soap and water. You wouldn't want to use them in streams and stuff. So I got into the habit and I like it uh, just fine that I just rinse them out in the Gamsol and uh, then they're fine. Some will get a little bit stiffer than others over months and months and I kind of like that and I'll talk a little bit about how I use those brushes that get a little more worn down. Um, if you're on a landscape painting trip and you don't have Gamsol or you only have a little bit, what I do always on, on trips is I wash them in the Gamsol, uh, just in my jar, and then I put them in like a plastic bag and I just wrap it. And then when I open them back up, they'll still be wet, even if there's some paint on them or all. And that way they haven't. And then when I get back to civilization, I'll wash them out more thoroughly. This is a brush I use a lot. It is a Long Filbert Series 278. And this is a typical way that I would clean my brush while I'm painting. I, this is a bowl of Gamsol, and I just dip it in here. And you'll see how the paint just comes out just with a very gentle touch. And then with a paper towel or napkin, I take it with my hands and I rub from the um, bottom hairs all the way to the tip. You could call it a shaft all the way to the end, where the thick part goes to the edge where it's thinner. And then I keep doing that. And you see how, as I keep doing it, less and less paint comes out. And I use my two fingers to kind of grab and pull. Now, sometimes if you have lots of paint in your brush, this can take multiple times for doing this. And you grab a new napkin or paper towel and you keep doing it until the brush doesn't have any more paint. Please, while you are painting, do not leave your brush down with the hairs down. It's going to distort and make your hairs splay. Be careful about that. Also, I like to use um, mineral spirit jars that don't have a metal mesh or grate. I feel that when I personally drag my brush across a metal grate, it will disintegrate the hairs. At the very end, once I've cleaned it out to my satisfaction, I lay it down flat. You don't rest your brush in um, a jar or a can and let it dry this way because what might happen is excess mineral spirits or paint or whatever is in here, liquid, will kind of settle in that shaft or might even come down the brush handle. And that's when your brush handle might start to crack or, you know, sometimes it might, hairs might fall out. So I would just lay it down flat at the end of the day and let your paint brush dry flat. These are two typical ways that people use their Gamsol. In one of these metal jugs where you can tighten it, these are great for travel. These also have these metal grates that I was talking about. You see, you put your brush in there and you would drag it across back and forth to clean the brush. This is what I typically use in my studio. This is also a very good way. This is just one of those inexpensive lunch baggies that you can get and you put it in here and then you put your Gamsol so maybe after a few days or a week or however long, there's sediment that falls to the bottom. This way you can pour out 
Damsol, let it drain and clean out in another jar. And then all the sediment, you just take this and throw it away and it's not as much cleanup. You can also use this baggie in here. Okay. So then, you know, being able to clean that up pretty easily. These are two different kinds of soaps that I will use, especially if I need to really clean out my brush. Like say I'm going from oil to acrylic or vice versa, or maybe I feel that my brush has gotten a little bit, you know, some sediment down in the shaft and I really want to clean it out. These are two great things. This is Jack's Linseed Soap. Now this is very, very soft and gooey. You'll see, it's almost like um, a honey. And this is great for your hands. And it's also great for um, just soaking, like taking a little bit of this and soaking it with some water um, and your brush, brush can kind of like soak in it for a while. This is something I also use that's really convenient. It is the Master's Brush Cleaner and Preserver, original BJ specially prepared. Um, and the great thing about this is that you can leave this near your cleaning sink. And it's a tub. So there's some warm water. You just kind of go back and forth. You see how it just takes off of film and it gets that last residue of paint that maybe the Gamsol didn't get. So this is something that is so great to use in your sink. And you can just rinse it out with the sink and then you just kind of use it over and over and it's just so perfect. And this type of stuff you just kind of like dip in and you can use your fingers and kind of with the warm water and get all the rest out. And then remember, once you're drying it, to lay it flat. This is excellent. This is Winsor Newton Brush Cleaner and Restore. And let me tell you, a little bit goes a long way for extreme cleaning. And this is what happens when you're using many brushes during the day. And for whatever reason, one brush got away and you didn't find it till the next day and it's hardened a little bit. Or if you've been using a brush over and over and over again, and just a little bit of paint has been left more towards the bottom end of the shaft. So when a brush has really been like stiff and you see how just that little bit still comes out. It wasn't noticeable when you used the Gamsol, but you could tell by feeling the brush that there was something in there. It just didn't feel soft. And so you just kind of put your brush in there, just let it sit for a few seconds, and all of a sudden, I really don't know what it, what's in there, but magic. And you just kind of wipe it and use both fingers and you kind of pressure on both sides, and voila. Let me try this brush. See if anything comes out. Every now and then, ooh, a, a little bit is coming out. Just pushing it in, ooh, all of a sudden, a lot of white is coming out at the bottom. And you'll see. This is what I do sometimes, you know, after you've been painting for a few weeks, look at that. And I will forget a brush and I'll have way too much paint on it or even just this little bit that if not cleaned out well enough, the paint will stiffen the brush, stiffen the brush, stiffen the brush. So just to let you know, we thought the brush was clean and just this little bit of this restore really got the very last bit. Now this is also a wonderful thing to use if your brushes are feeling really, really stiff. This Geneva brush dip. I, you know, I learn about all this stuff from other artists. They tell me about it and then I try it and I'm like, sounds great. <laughs> um, so let me take, this is what we would do. I learned about clipping brushes years ago from Richard Schmidt and I know a lot of artists do this. You just take a very thin piece of cardboard. It could be any sort of box from granola bars to cereal and these little clips. You dip it in this conditioner kind of just wipe out the excess a little bit and then you can store them overnight and they will make a very pristine um, edge again. Because as we, as us fine artists, if we use brushes, they will, they're, they're fibers, they will get worn. So I wanted to show you, so I unclip it and you'll see what a nice crisp edge. 
this is. And the brush is beautifully conditioned. So if I'm done painting and say I feel my hairs are getting a little bit dry, see, I'll just dip it in a little bit. I could just wipe off just a little bit of the excess, put my brush in between this piece of cardboard, and then clip it at the end and lay it flat and let it dry overnight. I've chosen a handful of my must-have brushes. Um, we evolve, and I'm sure you evolve also. There are, you go through periods where you use the same brush over and over and over again, and then someone will introduce you to a brush, and then you can't get enough of it, and you use that over and over and over again. So that's what I'm going through right now. I am obsessed with angled brushes. I'm also obsessed with um, crisp, straight-edged um, brushes, either bright synthetics or sables, but anything that is a crisp, sharp edge. Um, and I've just grabbed a couple. So I have an ivory dagger. I have a Sable Series 7320. I absolutely love fan brushes and always <laughs> recommend them to people and would love to have a resurgence of sh fan, brush fan brushes in the world. And this is just a uh, classic fan. Um, All-time favorite is the Eclipse Extra Long. And so this is also one of my new favorites, this Angular Series 275. So if I could choose five brushes, these would be maybe the five brushes I would choose, like if you had to be deserted on a desert island. Um, and um, so I, I use these for everything. I love using a fan brush for when you block in a painting. If anyone's seen me do a demo, uh, a fan brush is amazing. You see how it splays as you paint, which means that the brushes get quite thin and it thins out the paint and you get like a very bristle, um, scratchy quality. And I absolutely love that when I do backgrounds. And I love my Eclipse when you need to do big shapes in hair. It's delicate, yet has the power. You can use it differently for when you press down or when you're very, very delicate just on the tip. It um, has multiple uses. This brush, you wouldn't think it, but when you get paint on it and you can go right up to the edge and create a super crisp edge, and yet you can do incredibly delicate strokes here and there. Like this is the type of brush, um, the Series 70 through 20, this is the type of brush that I would do my strokes on the highlights and try and do them in one or two strokes and leave the, you know, so I can see the shapes. Um, these angular brushes are great for when you're coming in here and you're carving and you're drawing at the same time. So these are just five brushes that I absolutely recommend and a little bit of why and where I use them on a painting. Okay, so I'm going to go over a little bit about cleaning, which for me I don't do much of, but also the types of brushes and uh, the way I use them. So this sort of can here is what you use when you go out landscape painting. I'll also use it in the studio, and it just has a screen in there. So I will just, at the end of the day, or while I'm painting, I will be using this too. I will just wash it and use it on the, uh, on the paper towel. I tend to use a lot more paint. So I can't just use the dipping sort of method that Sue uses. I'll have a lot of paint on and while I'm painting, I, a lot of times I want to clean the brush off, you know, so that I can go to another color. So I'll do that and I'll use a paper towel and I'll, I'll, I'll clean it off. Then when I'm painting for the day, I will take a plastic bag uh, like this and I'll just take my brushes and I'll put them in there and I just close it up like this and then I just put it in my backpack when I'm you know, out painting. And then the next day when I come, the mineral spirits is still wet on here, so the paint certainly hasn't dried if the mineral spirits haven't. Um, when I get home and I have clean mineral spirits, I might clean all my brushes off again so that I can more thoroughly get things out. It's not as clean as like with what Sue or Richard or people do. Um, for me, it's not as much of an issue because I use a lot of paint. Now, these brushes here are, let me see what kind these are. 
These are the, um, are, uh, some of my favorite brushes I have only been using for a couple years. These are Rosemary and Company Ebony Short Flat Number 6. Now these are all three of these are the same exact brush, okay, which is kind of funny to see, but they came all as longs when I ordered them, and I have a whole bunch of these. Now these I have cut for when I go out. We went, I went to China um, last year with some friends, and we painted, me and Situ and some other friends, we painted there for several weeks. And I have a small carrier for my brushes, so I cut these so they'll just fit right in my box. So I don't need to um, uh, worry about the long brushes, and it's just to making things smaller. And when I'm doing small paintings, these short handled, you can order these, I think, as short handles as well. If I thought ahead, I would have done that. But I just cut them off, and then they fit in there. But the interesting thing to see about these is um, how they've gotten all worn down. Um, now, you might think this is horrible that I didn't protect my brushes well, and I'm sure Rosemary is, is not too happy and semi to see what I've done to their brushes. But the thing is, is when I work with them, I like to scrub. I'll use them thick, and I scrub on the canvas quite a bit. Um, and I, that's just how I like to do it. I'll put a lot of paint, and I'll scrub it in and move it around. Now, and then you'll get to this, where it starts to get worn down like this. And then as you use it a little more, it'll get more worn down like this. And this even has, is kind of stiff. It's gotten a little bit of paint in the furrow. Um, and again, they just, each one of these, I'll bring one of each one of these with me. I don't bring a ton of brushes when I paint. But these particular types, I'll have a couple of them. And certainly in the studio, I'll have all these different ones to different degrees. Because this brush here will, will, will create a different feel to it. And then even brushes like this, like you can see these two brushes here. So you can see, again, this is how it would start out with a nice straight flat. And then this isn't from overwashing it. This is from the way I like to scrub. These are bristle brushes. These are uh, rosemary. Uh, what are they here? Ivory long flat, um, ivory short. And, uh, but they're both bristle brushes. And so this one's a little shorter than this one, but this is originally started out very square. And then I rub it. And I love the way, as they start to flay out like this, I will use that uh, in, for certain effects when I'm working into wet paint to have some of that kind of splaying out. Now, this here is what I often use to when I travel to put brushes into. It's something like this where I can put brushes, and sometimes I'll put a pencil in there, and I'll have palette knives in here. And I have a larger one like this, and then the one that's shorter, that's half this size, which is where I've cut the brushes down for. And so this is a nice thing because it just folds up and you zipper it like this, and so it keeps your, your brushes um, kind of protected in your backpack or whatever. Um, and then when you open it up, you can take this little uh, string here that, that tightens, and then it can turn into a um, just something that you set down. Uh, so in the studio, often I'll just have this set next to me, and then I've got the brushes laid out, and I can take out. Do I want to have a, a real small little brush with a nice edge here? These are all different ones, all different kinds of rosemaries that I use. There's others that I use as well. I love these little soft ones like this. Now, some of the brushes I will use real thick. And it's not only the, the bristles that I use real thick. I'll use a lot of them thick. Uh, and then other ones I'll use for different purposes. Like, I don't have one in here, but I can grab one here. Some of these soft ones I love here, where uh, you, and you can see that in one of these paintings. Like this painting that I did, uh, I block it in very thick. But then I'll take a brush like this, and I will just, sometimes I do it right that day, and sometimes I'll just wait till the next day when the paint has stiffened a little bit, the thick paint. And I'll just kind of do this, where I'll, I'll kind of move, it kind of unifies things into a more of a soft feel. And I'll wash, I'll rinse this off in the mineral spirits, and then I'll do it again. And oftentimes I'll do that over the whole thing, and then I'll come back and I'll paint, and then I'll find the hard edges. Uh, other paintings where something like this here um, is painted with less of that, less of that more um, uh, uh, softer sort of a feel. So I'm kind of leaving the texture alone. Now this often I will paint 
it's straight thick with the rosemary brushes, bristle and soft ones. And then usually I'll let it dry a bit, maybe a day or two, and then I'll come back over it and I'll paint over it with thick paint as well um, and get some of the textural elements. And for the most part, I'm leaving them alone. So it's a completely different um, technique with the same brushes. Uh, so anyways, those are a few of the, um, just a few of the ways that I use these brushes and there's so many of them. And it is interesting to see how soon I use the brushes in such a different way for some completely different effects and techniques. And that kind of holds over to the way you clean your brushes and maintain them. Because I like when having some of them as they get stiffer and they kind of age, I like that stiffness and I'll use it. And it gives you a different effect with it. And I think sometimes people have this idea that, well, I want to buy a, buy a brush that is going to, I'll just never have to buy another one. And I don't think, at least for me, that's the way to think about it. Brushes go through an age, you, they're meant to be used. And if you're going to be so afraid of pr preserving your brush more than you are with the effects that you can get in your paintings, then you might be keeping yourself from using them in certain ways. So brushes will, of course, you can ruin a brush really quickly if you let the paint completely dry in it. Um, but as far as like sometimes when people will see me paint or I remember like Ken Oster, the way he would use his brushes, I love doing that where, you know, things will get worn way, way, way down. This, this starts to get worn down. I actually had to trim this, the tip, because this was originally like this long. And I had to, as it gets long, only a few of the brush strands are, so I trim it with a, with a, um, with a, uh, uh, a razor. What kind of brush is that? This one here is a... Rosemary and Company Pure Sable Series 99. It's a number four. Um, so it's kind of gotten worn down. And then a brush like this as well. This brush has gotten worn down almost to nothing. See what this is. This is a Rosemary and Company Pure Sable Series 81, and it's a four. But if you can see this one, the end of it has gotten so eaten away uh, that, and it's, it's very stiff, but this is a great brush to draw with. Okay, I mean, I can like, I love this for blocking in, or even if I've got thick paint, sometimes I'll just go in with this and kind of use it to mess edges up or to kind of move things together. Uh, this wouldn't be a brush that I would be able to make a nice, pure, clean stroke. I have others that start to splay out this way and that way, and they're just great for doing hair or kind of organic feel. So as far as how long the brush lasts, my brushes, I'm sure, last don't last as long as Susan's brushes. Um, but I do continue to use them in a different way. Like a brush like this, Sue would probably say, that brush is not useful anymore, I throw it away. Whereas for me, because of the technique, I continue to use it. And in fact, it's, it would be kind of annoying if I'm just given all new brushes and I didn't have any that were a little worn down because certain techniques that I like to do, I couldn't do. So it's almost like aging them. You know, you've got, you've got these here, which are great for one purpose, and then the aged ones are good for another purpose. And then eventually, they get so worn down that there's really nothing left, and then I'll throw them away. But um, I don't feel like cheated that, oh, this brush should have lasted me for 20 years. I feel like I've gotten good use out of it. All right, so here's some of the brushes. There's many, many different types of brushes that I use from Rosemary uh, and Company. Um, there's a kind of different, different groups here. So from this side over here, I already, these are some of the softer type uh, um, brushes. This is like a long filbert, uh, and this is what I often use is for softening things. Then these flats I love. So this is a flat that hasn't yet been, been um, worked with that much. So you can see this one and this one are still flat. And then these here, this, these here start out as flats and they kind of get turned into filberts and they get roughed up. And I, I tend to use these actually more than I use the, uh, the ones that are right out of the box. These are great for making really sharp edges. Like if you're doing a profile, you're trying to make, carve out a sharp edge on something or make a real square stroke. Um, and this is another ones of those. There's many of these that I like. I have many more than we have here. Uh, this I love, this, this, this kind of longer filbert. This is the Rosemary and Company Longer Filbert, Filbert Series 
278. And I love this one. I've used this a lot because it's, it's longer and it's a great one for blocking in uh, areas and kind of seeping them soft and working paint into paint. All of these I tend to work pretty thick with. Now these are some of the smaller um, ones that are the Pure Sables Series 99. And in fact, these two brushes are exactly the same uh, brush. And you can see how it starts out with a nice sharp point to it. And then it gets slowly gets worn down. So you can see if I put them right right next to each other. You can see how this one has gotten shorter and I've trimmed it and it's gotten roughed up. This is also another one that I love that is, uh, uh, which one is this? This is the Pointed Hound Series 272. And this is just a great brush. Uh, it's, it's more of that kind of uh, a, a different sort of material, but the brushes, the, the bristles can kind of, it's a great one just for doing a little area and kind of scrubbing with because the, 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 the uh, hairs will kind of can splay out a bit and work into other paint, but they're not, so they're not, they don't give you as crisp of a one as a sable, and that's the advantage of them. And then these rounds, these sorts of different sorts of rounds, I, I use quite a bit, especially when I'm doing smaller paintings or I'm doing delicate uh, little areas of a painting that want, have to be soft. Um, and so then these are also the Pure Sable uh, Series uh, 61, or 81 is that? 61. Um, and uh, I love these rounds. Uh, and, and then again, they'll, they'll get scrubbed down. This one will eventually get scrubbed down very small, but this is kind of as it comes out of the thing. And it's great for certain things, and then it comes good for other things. And then there's the bristles. I, I use the bristles a lot for blocking in, for real thick areas and backgrounds. Like when you see some of the paintings where I have abstract backgrounds that are very thick, that's where these big bristles will come in of different shapes. These are the flats and then, then the filberts, some of the longer filberts. And then you can see on the side here some of these flats. And both of these, I, this last painting I did, I used both of these, these brushes for different things. This more for working paint into each other and getting kind of paint into paint effects and then this for making really distinct sharp edges along the places where I wanted the sharp edges. When I was in school, uh, there was a wonderful teacher there named Irving Shapiro who did watercolors. I wasn't in his class, but I liked to do watercolors as well, and he even, he even uh, bought uh, some of my watercolors. And it was interesting because one day when he looked at, saw me doing a watercolor, he was shocked because I was using oil painting brushes. Um, just I just wash them out with water so I don't get the oil in them with soap and water. That's the one time I do when I do watercolors or acrylics. Um, but he used brushes in a certain way that he did his style, and he would buy like five or six hundred dollar brushes. And the way I used them, I was using them just like I do oil, like scrubbing in things and doing interesting techniques, just the way I like like to paint. And I do that now with watercolors as well. And the thing is, if I was using those $500 brushes, I would, ne I would probably have just never used those techniques because I would have destroyed the brush, you know, quicker and it's too expensive. So the rosemary brushes are wonderful because they're so economical. I mean, they, for the quality that you get, it's amazing. And I really don't see a great difference between the watercolors that I were to use a $500 brush as opposed to high quality brushes like this that are very economical. And so that's another reason why I like the rosemary brushes is we can buy lots of brushes and it's not a gigantic, you know, uh, cost. And then we can use them and as they wear out, we'll get new ones. And by the way, I, I use, now I just use the rose, rosemary brushes because they have such a variety and there's really no need to try other ones. Um, and I use them for my watercolors as well as for my acrylics. And even when I do brush and water with charcoal, I use the rosemary brushes. I, the only thing that I would say is that is the one time when I do, if the brush is not really thoroughly dry, I wash them out with soap and water before switching from oil to watercolor or acrylic because I don't want the oil uh, or any of that getting into the watercolor. It can, it can kind of mess things up where the paint won't stick properly to the brush. So.